All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to season two of Laughs from the Past. Season one was 22 episodes of sporadic, random, no cohesiveness to it, just random fun stories. Season two is going to be a 10-episode season detailing the wild and bizarre stories of the Civil War. Civil War is very interesting, very bloody, very deadly. And there's a lot of characters that came about, a lot of inventions, a lot of just funny stories that are kind of sad as well. So that's what we're going to do. We have uh, this episode, though, is just going to be an introduction to the war in general with some fun tidbits, brothers fighting brothers, Siamese twins getting drafted, Elephants being offered to help, camels being tested, why they wore the colors, and some other stuff. My name's Jimmy. I'm coming to you from New Jersey, and I have my co-host Jake coming to you in Denver. If you didn't listen to season w- one, how this works is I have a I have a general history and love, uh, general knowledge and love for history. Jake's hearing this off for the first time. Just gives you his uh, his reactions. Yeah. I'm I'm hey Jim I'm I'm a little bit of the crowd. I I like to add some questions that I think the people might want to ask if the, if they're not in tune with the story. Um, and I think this will take it. This will be so every episode I don't have to go. Uh, when was the war again? Uh, okay. Uh, they they had bicycles back then, so. We we kind this will be the intro to the kind of the time period, a little bit of a who, what, where, and why, so I don't have to repeat the same questions, and I and it'll let me focus on making jokes, Jim. There we go. That's, that's what I got, babe. So for this episode, we're not doing one story or one person or one battle. I had Jake send me questions, just general questions, so I could get some research done, and I picked and chose a couple of those and found some interesting stories and stuff like that to talk about. What and if, is if I may, Jim? Yeah. So Jimmy comes to me and says, "Jake, send me your questions about the Civil War." Now, hey, when's the last time people studied the Civil War? Probably like middle of high school. So, so, <coughs> sophomore or junior year of yeah. high school. So I and and I almost had to fight millennial instincts because your instinct is just to Google stuff. Like I wanted to Google. The start and finish, but no, that's a genuine question. That was answered in the intro. But uh, I sent Jimmy 31 questions that maybe will uh, will leak out at some point, but there's <laughs> some humor, a lot of curiosity, a little bit of me being an idiot, so I'm, I, I'm interested to see what Jimmy scooped out of this and is going to present to me. So your general knowledge of the Civil War, and I'm sure some people listening, is North-South slavery? What was that? Is that your general like knowledge is north versus south over slavery? I would guess that's a lot of people's general consensus. Yeah, and I guess that's kind of the other thing that's kind of funny nowadays is that you question things more. Like, because exa- that's basically, I think, what was in my head and is in most people's head. North versus south, slavery. But I couldn't tell you if there was other things that really factored in, if they were fake factors. It, like one of my first questions to you, I think it was question number two was like, was this out of boredom? Like, did America become America and basically like decide they needed to fight and slavery was kind of the reason? No, knows the okay. knows the answer there is slavery is the reason uh, you'll find a, a bunch of people. And this was one of your questions. You said why slavery is the main topic, but I feel like there was a lot more reasons. And you'll find a lot of people from the South tell you it was about states rights. And then the follow-up is... The, but about, that's uh, them kind of hiding behind saying that they, they just wanted slaves. <laughs> you can argue all different things, but when you pick down the layers of those arguments, state rights, it all comes back to slavery. What was happening was the nation was expanding, so California is a state. But everywhere else in between California is a territory, much like Puerto Rico now, because there's not enough people there to count 
Uh, so they have like a governor. They they get to come to meetings, but they don't really get a vote on anything. So, so it, it, and this was one of my questions too, because you're trying to think of what the map looked like during during 1861. Apparently, like Louisiana purchase has been purchased, but isn't a state. Or where am I? Yeah. Uh, so I will. I have it right here. So the whole the whole East Coast is established, right? Texas is a state, Louisiana is a state, um, um, Arkansas is a state, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. They're all states all the way up. Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri is a new state. Kansas is a new state. So <clears throat> then there's like territories like the Dakota Territory, the Utah Territory, New Mexico Territory, Colorado Territory. Um, Oregon is a state because they had gold and California is a state. So what, what the main, one of the catalysts to the civil war was <clears throat> they wanted to make these new states, right? Right. Like they wanted Missouri and Kansas to be a state. Okay. But the country was pretty evenly divided, pro-slavery, anti-slavery, North and South. And Lincoln and Buchanan and, and the presidents had to figure out well, these new states, right? Are they going to be pro or anti-slavery? There was the Missouri Compromise, which was like the Mason-Dixon line, basically like the border. Missouri was above it. Yo, not for nothing. That's kind of nuts. Crazy. And we're going to go into that in episode two a little bit about how they handled that situation, because the South wanted more voters and more representatives in um, right in Congress. So, and like, just just think about that now. I'm trying to think of. What's a good what's a good state to use if <laughs> if they were just like we're gonna we're gonna totally reset Illinois mm-hmm. and and we can do anything with marijuana gambling I uh, I don't know a, abortion type stuff um gun laws like everything that's an issue if that was free game for a new state holy smokes yeah so and not only if a new state was anti-slavery. They didn't allow slaves. Not only did that mean there's going to be representatives of the anti-slavery party in Congress and Senate and all that. It meant that the freed slaves or any slave that then moves there, they're three fifths a human as according to the law in voting. So 50 um, freed black people count for 30 votes or, or 30 representatives. You know what, you know what I mean? So it's a big deal. That's what. Yeah. So if if the new states never really happened, I it would have come to a head eventually, but not as quick because they were they were fighting over these new states, all these laws, all that. Eventually, the South succeeds. And if you go to the causes of succession, like all the papers, uh, almost every state mentions slavery in their reason for succeeding from the U- Union and for and joining the Confederacy. Sure. So just the people that say it wasn't about just slavery are wrong. It was it was everything boils down to slavery. So much so that Alexander Stevens, who became the vice president of the Confederacy, because they became their own country. Like I think a lot of people don't even like realize that. Like a lot of people that are very green to this whole thing. Like the Confederacy had a president, had a vice president. Jeff Jefferson Davis. Yep. There you go. Nice. They formed I know how I remember that. How? This is actually this is good. We had a new girl transfer into our school, I want to say in seventh grade or sixth grade, and while we were studying this, and her name was Jessica Davis. There you go. Remember that so forever. So I was like, this, this is an easy one to remember. You racist, Jessica. Yeah, get out of here. What, what'd your granddad do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, So the, and they had their own currency. Like They had a lot of, they like put together stuff. So Vice President of the Confederacy, Alexander Stevens, eloquently noted, this is his quote, the new Constitution has put at rest forever all the agitating questions relating to our peculiar institution. African slavery, as it exists amongst us, the proper status of the Negro in our form of civilization, and further that, Our new government is founded upon exactly the opposite idea, which is equality of races, 
its foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. This, our new government, is the first in the history of the world based upon this great physical, philosophical, and moral truth. Try to read that statement from the vice president of the Confederacy and say it wasn't about fucking slavery and being overall terrible people. Yeah. Pretty brutal, huh? It's tough. I mean, you can say the economy was tied in because if the South lost lost slavery, they would have lost like their economy. They produced a lot of cotton. They had the fourth highest economy in the world, the South alone at the time. So they were like their wallet was attached to slavery. It's not like if you're a business owner and you're making millions hand over foot on slaves. You can understand the wallet part, but I mean, in the end, right, you can't, <laughs> but you get what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yes. Um, all right. So that's the general stuff. That was a heavy quote, but that's. I hate when I hear people say it wasn't about slavery, so I had to I had to put that in there. Now for some wild stuff, okay? Sure. Hit it. You asked Civil War is a funny name in hindsight. Yeah. How about that? Mm-hmm. Um because civil Civil War. It's like an oxymoron. Giant shrimp. Yeah. Jumbo shrimp. Jumbo shrimp. Yeah, I got that. Giant shrimp works too, but Rap nobody music. says that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fight that. All right. Um, Civil war was a term coined by like the Romans. Like it was a term for war amongst itself, uh, country versus country. It's only like, you know, within the country. So, so it was already a term, but this war was not known as a civil war in the North. It was known as the war of rebellion or the great rebellion. In the South, it was known as War for Southern Independence. And that's what they called it during the time. And then eventually a magazine, some national magazine put like Civil War heroes or whatever on the cover. And then it, it got that name forever. But at the time, it was not called the Civil War. Okay. Do you know what? Makes the, sense, I guess. Yeah. Do you know what it's called in Europe? No idea. Yeah. War of Succession. Isn't that interesting that they call it, they know it as something different? Well, and I, I don't want to segue us too far because I know you've you've mapped out for my questions a little bit, but like I'm trying to get the world vibe because I feel America, 1861, America established themselves as kind of a superpower or uh, the superpower? No, no, uh, on the verge, not the superpower, but like a little bit of eminent domains going on. They, they were coming up. They, they got the new land and they were owning it and like... Yeah. They seceded from Britain and all that stuff. But like with with the country clearly in battle and you just so this makes my question worthwhile. You talk about succession. I mean, that sounds like they knew whoever won this was basically going to be the superpower. Kind of. Yeah. So, yeah, you asked. So I asked, why didn't like why didn't Europe or other countries attack us and be like, this upcoming superpower is weak right now. Yes. So, yeah, you at you your question was, what was the rest of the world stoked? Why didn't other countries attack us during this? <laughs> okay, don't you don't have to clarify what my actual question was. <laughs> Why it's funny? This is the rest of the world. Yo, they're at war right now. Let's go get them. Yeah, but right? no, no uh, Russia had their own thing going on. The F French asked the British to help them join the Confederacy, which would have been huge. The British had, you know ties economically to both sides the north and the south the french had ties to the south and the french really wanted to go into the south help the south so then the south would help them take over france or take over mexico the french wanted to befriend the south so that then they could go fuck up mexico and like classic do their, do their stuff over there uh but great britain didn't want to help the confederacy because even though they relied heavily on the South for its cotton, the British had enough cotton like piled up, like saved up, that they could last however long this war was going to be. It lasted four years. I'm sure they didn't think it was going to be that long. 
but they did not want to recognize the Confederacy because then the Union would be against them and they may lose Canada, which was, you know, bordering the Union. Um, Also, the Union would harm British merchant ships and possibly cut off supplies of American produced food and products. So, I mean, the the trade wise, America was doing a ton in the North and the South, but the South was really giving them cotton and the North was giving them a lot more stuff. So in the end, they all just said, like, let's just let that happen. And this this wasn't on there, but now I'm starting to wonder it. But Industrial Revolution is before, during, after? I mean, it had to be a little bit of an arms race to make better weapons and stuff. And by doing that, did they stumble into, like, steel factories and shit? I don't know. The Industrial Revolution was before. So it was, like, just before. Like, the steam engine came out, gas-powered stuff came out, uh, boats and ships and all that. But I don't have an answer to that one. Um, There was one controversy that occurred between the Union and Great Britain. Building of Confederacy warships at a British shipyard. The Union was very opposed to this. And after the war, they received $15.5 million in arbitration for the damage caused by the two ships. So Britain, Britain let the Confederacy build warships on their shipyard. And then those warships hurt the Union, and the Union charged the British for all that damage afterwards. That's pretty nuts, huh? That's awesome. It's awesome that the Britain paid up. Union, yeah, hey, Union they didn't, got they some didn't balls. want to get their ass beat again. <laughs> yeah, Union, Union's got some balls on them. Yeah, so that's... And then France wanted in so they could, they could go mess with... Um, they could go mess with Mexico... Uh, but the people of France were not like really in agreement because the f- Confederacy was endorsed by those who supported Napoleon um, and the French Republicans supported the Union. So everyone was kind of split. So that's why no one invaded us and no one helped either side, really. Like during the American Revolution, the French helped the U.S. beat the British, but no one really was uh, helping anyone else here. That was a good question because you feel like America is vulnerable. Right, at a time when land was currency, basically. Yeah. All right, so there's a, there's a part and in here And that's why that, I will never be a history teacher, because I just said land was currency, and that's something a history teacher would never say. <laughs> this is a question that coincides with the Britain problem. Um, how'd they pick team colors? Do you yeah, know, do you know, that was a big one. Do you know the colors? Uh, the Union was blue and the Confederates were like red or no, isn't it? Is it blue and gray? I'm blanking right now. Blue and blue. And there, gray. Wasn't, there wasn't full red uni. So no, it was blue and blue gr- was the north. Gray was the south. Yep. Many, okay. many men wore whatever they brought from home at first. They didn't think this was going to be a long war. Red unis would have sucked. You'd be British. Oh, that's why they didn't do that. Okay. See, that's, that's something you don't hear in the history class. <laughs> Uh, local Nobody mi- wanted to be red because they just kicked the Brits' ass. So, so local militia units had like their own kind of garb, like you know, and they would wear those. And it wasn't until after like the first couple battles when they realized it was going to be a long war that were like, oh shit, let's get uniforms. So the Union was blue because they were USA. They wore blue during the which revolution. is hilarious, by the way. That's like if you start a band or something, and you're like, okay, I think our band's getting. This is getting pretty real. This is legit. Yeah. Let's we gotta get some band outfits. <laughs> the war's getting real. We gotta we gotta look good. <laughs> Listen to this. Some groups influenced by the French Zouaves of North Africa arrived decked in baggy trousers, usually bright red or striped, with fez hats or turbans, because they had fought over in North Africa in some some conflict over there. They just showed up looking stylish as hell to the Civil War. That had to be a funny sight. But um, so what happened with the South was they wore gray because it was kind of like the easiest color to make. Um, Didn't matter what kind of sheep color you were using. They were all cotton, which had to be hot as fuck. Had to be so hot in South Carolina and the South and shit wearing full cotton marching everywhere. So anyway, the union's interesting, Jake, because they kind of ran out of cotton. They didn't have the uh, mill, the textile plants. They just produced the cotton. They didn't have the factories, the industrial factories. That was all in the north in the cities. And Mm. they burned a ton of their cotton because they were trying to stronghand 
Britain into helping them because they they traded all their cotton with Britain and they were like, Britain, you better you better join us or we're going to stop giving you our cotton. And then Britain was like, no, that we don't care. And they're like, well, no, we're serious. Check this out. And they burned a bunch of their cotton. And then Britain was like, no, we're still good. We got enough. We're, we'll hold out. We are okay. <laughs> so they ran out of cotton. So they said at the end of the war, a lot of, uh, a lot of Confederate soldiers were wearing Union blue that then they would muddy with walnut holes, acorns, lye, and like bullets and nails. And they would like wash it and muddy it so it would turn into a gray. I mean, how are you going to win a war when you're wearing the opposer, opposing team's uniform rubbed with dirt all over it? Yeah, it's a bad look. They, uh, or it's like the underdog look. Yeah, they called it butternut. Butternut. I thought that was kind of interesting. Though. You asked that one. I didn't have that one. Um, all right, let's get to some real interesting stuff. Ready? So people always talk about how this was uh, a house divided. There was brothers in battle, you know? So I have some examples here that are just insane. Just so weird to think about. Senator George B. Crittenden of Kentucky was proud of two sons who became major generals, one on each side. It's like the old Manning ball. Kind of. <laughs> Similar. Eli versus Peyton, except they're trying to kill each other and all their men. At Bull Run, which was one of the first battles, we'll get to that in a future episode, Frederick Hubbard of the Washington Artillery of New Orleans, who wore gray for the first time in seven years, met Henry Hubbard of the 1st Minnesota Infantry, who wore blue. The brothers were wounded and, by coincidence, placed side by side in the stable, which served as a hospital. Okay. Two opposing sides, same war, both wounded, same hospital. That's like a weird post game. So I've, I guess, and this is something else I talked about in my questions because it, it leaks into the Civil War thing that we know now wasn't true. Were things more peaceful? Was it like, we are America. If you're a prisoner of war, you're not getting fully tortured. If we, if we both get hurt and end up in the same hospital, like, okay, we're, we're still people from the same homeland. I, I mean, was there any of that? I don't know. There were only two people arrested for war crimes during the Civil War. One was the guy who ran a POW camp, and we'll, we're going to get into the POW camps in a future episode. So for the most part, I mean, besides like the killing within battle, yeah, for the most part, it wasn't as torture and uh, terrible to you know, injured and uh, civilians as other wars. But there, were, there was like some POW camps that were fucked. Okay. This is a, this is a crazy one. So before the South split, all the generals were, you know, they went to, um, they went to the same schools. Well, what's that? What's West Point? They went to West Point. They were like, you know, classmates. And shit. Oh, wow. I didn't think about that. All That's this, a crazy dynamic. Yeah. Like, so like all the same professors and teachers and all that shit. Yeah, that's nuts. So listen to this one. The war was touched off by an artillery duel between Confederates ashore at Charleston and a garrison of federal troops at Fort Sumter in the harbor. So you have a ship, you have a ship out there, right? And then you have guys on the harbor and they're shooting at each other. Commander of the handful in blue was Major Robert Anderson, whose father-in-law was a governor of Georgia. Anderson had been so adept as an artillery pupil in his days at West Point that his instructor had broken tradition to keep him as an assistant. The Confederate commander who directed firing on Sumter was the instructor himself, General P.G. Beauregard. So they're shooting at each other. Instructor and uh, instructee are now heads of two opposing forces. That's bizarre. This doesn't happen in wars. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Like, I know his tell. I know his moves. Oh, believe Stealing me. Stealing signs. Yeah. It's like when you get traded to a different baseball team, you're like, oh, we got to change the signs. McCann's coming back. He knows all of them. There's another story here about uh, there was an old man who was in his farm, and he it was Gettysburg, and he saw the war was coming, so he went to this underground cellar and slept. And when he woke up, he had a note from his son who was battling up above and knew that his dad would be sleeping down there. So went down and said hi, like while he was sleeping, and left him a note. Just weird shit, man. 
Yeah, don't love that. Like weird at the home front shit. So this is the cool. This is the most bizarre story. There's two brothers called Chang and Ang Bunker. Would you like to comment on those names? Chang and Ang. Chang and Ang. I love it. Who's born first? That's a great. Did you build? Did you build onto Ang or did you reduce from Chang? I think you're gonna love this answer. They're Siamese twins adjoined at the breast. Okay. Okay. Got it. <laughs> so how did Siamese twins like uh, survive and stuff? I don't know. They shared a liver. <laughs> Been there. So, so they're uh, they are the original Siamese twins, natives of Siam, modern day Thailand. So maybe they're born after. Yeah, I guess that term comes from them. That's cool. They were joined at the sternum, and they became a uh, popular attraction traveling museum exhibits, of course, obviously. I mean, I don't even blame the people who saw that and were like, that needs to be in a, in a museum. In 1860, 1840, you know, these two humans are attached. Yeah, dude, I, I kind of don't like it, because I feel if that happens nowadays, it's like on the news... And they're like, oh, we do all this medical stuff. So, like, worries me, like, back in the day what happened. Well, they lived, like, a good life. Like, they're... 200 years earlier, we killed witches by putting stones on them. And now you've got double the person popping out? Yeah, it's some witchcraft. Well, anyway, after they retired from museum exhibit exhibits, in 1839, they bought 110 acres in the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina and settled down. They married sisters. That's bizarre. Time out. The Siamese twins married sisters. That were n- not joined. The world is so... Uh, they had kids. Good. I'm, I'm happy they're happy. And they built a successful farm using slave labor and became naturalized citizens and devoted confederates. Imagine, I mean, being a slave is terrible, obviously. But if your master is like a Siamese twin freak... It's like the world just got to be so upside down. What's going on here? It's a weird. That's a weird farm. It's a weird farm to live on. Anyway, not a normal farm. Not a normal farm. The Union General Stone Man comes through, right, from the Union. He comes through, he takes over, and he drafts people from this town, and they have to fight for the Union. I don't care where your sympathies lie. I choose your name out of this house, from this town, in this lottery, and you're fighting with me in the Union. Sounds like a bad idea. Sounds like that's how you get a lot of friendly fire deaths when you choose Confederates to come fight for you in the Union. Well, guess what? Aang got chosen, but Chang did not. What do you think they did? I think they went for it. Aang said, since my brother's name was not drawn, I will not be able to join. General Stoneman said, since they were joined at the sternum and their livers refused, neither one had to serve, but their eldest sons both enlisted and fought in their place. That's wild times. I can't really talk about the Chang and Ang stuff. Why? Well, are we doing an ep on that? Because that's a lot for me. No, this was it. That was okay, it. It's a little tidbit. Good. That's the that's the most fun tidbit from this episode. Because Jake, imagine being in that town when they have the lottery, right? And ev- all the townspeople are hanging around wherever they are at the church, maybe. And uh, Union, uh, Union General George Stoneman pulls a paper out and says, Ang Bunker, you have been drafted. The whole town goes, oh, what? What's wrong with Ang? <laughs> and then, like, Ang stands up from the back row with Chang up on his side. Attached. And, attached. And General, attached. General Stoneman's just got to be like, ah, ah. Okay. <laughs> That's one of those things where you, you honestly hope that people are logic enough to be like, oh, whatever you guys want to do, <laughs> knock yourselves out, Siamese twins. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, if you start putting pressure on Siamese twins, you end up looking bad. <laughs> chainsaw them right in half? Oh, there it is. I would Got brought up. I, <laughs> no chainsaws back then, though. I think you put them front lines. It's tough. Distraction. Death sentence. You think that's tough? You think that's mean to say? All right. Well, you asked if people dodged the war, which Chang and Eng did. Right. They had and a- I, I mean, that also, because, I mean, the generic thing now, if people talk war, they're like, I'll go to Canada, man. I'll do it. A lot so, of people like, did. So, like, were people doing that? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people dodged it. It was hard 
for Lincoln to get Northerners to fight. It was very easy to get Southerners to fight. So I wouldn't say it was hard to get Northerners to fight, but in comparison to the Southerners. The Southerners it was very easy to get people to join because it was basically like they're in your front yard. They're in your county with guns. What are you going to do? Only 4% of the population own slaves or whatever it is, 10% maybe. I don't know the exact number. It's small. But okay. what are you going to do? you got to defend your country, your county, yeah. your town. It's very easy to get Southerners to fight. It was hard to get Northerners to fight. They had to say, you know, you have to fight for the Union, the fight for slavery. They had to try and do that, even though slavery wasn't being taken away. The Civil War, I guess we should have said at the beginning, if you don't know. Lincoln never said he was going to abolish slavery. The South just didn't believe him. They just thought he was. And they saw that they weren't allowing it in any future states, which then allowed for them not to have as much representation in government, and which then hampered other business decisions. But so there, the, 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 the North never actually said slavery was getting abolished yet. Hmm. Interesting wrinkle. But you could pay like $300 or you wouldn't have to fight. Uh, an entire county in New York paid like 30 grand, and then no one from that county went to the fight. So there was legal ways to dodge it. But Lincoln said the intent of the draft was not to force men to join, but to increase the number of enlistees. They also would incentivize them. That's how bonuses came around, because people learned quickly not to volunteer, but instead waited for bounties to become available, which are like signing bonuses, because why join for free when down the line incentives are going to come? But yeah, a lot of people dodged. And there was, there was riots. In New York, there was riots. Have you ever seen gangs in New York? There was riots because... They were worried that, like, if slavery became um, all the blacks were going to come and take their jobs. Like, there was, you know, just general racist people out there that didn't care about slavery, just care about their job. Right. Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Current day. Yeah. Um, what else? What other questions did you have? What was going on in the West? Like I said there's a lot of territories. Some of the draft dodges went West to the Wild West and stuff like that. California had a lot of people from Massachusetts that went back and they were called the uh, nickname. They were the 100 Californian Cavalry Men. They went to Mass. They joined the Second Masters Cavalry. And then they were later joined by three more companies from California. So there were people that like moved to California but still felt involved. No battles ever took place in California. There were some forts built and stuff like that, but it never went out there. All right, two more categories and questions for you on this first episode, Intro to the Civil War. You asked, how were animals involved? But you can't tell me anything sad. Yeah, dude. I, what I was picturing was like stories about dogs and sad stuff and hopefully happy stuff. But you, you've mentioned cooler animals already, so I'm kind of excited. But yeah, no sad stuff. No sad animal stuff. Despite orders of the contrary... Many soldiers kept pets with them, including dogs, cats, squirrels, raccoons, and other wildlife as, like, mascots. One regiment from Wisconsin even had a pet eagle that was carried on its own perch next to the regimental flags. A General Lee was supposed to have a, had a pet chicken that faithfully delivered an egg for the general every day. I don't know about that, but uh, they tested out a camel corpse. They sent people to the Middle East to bring back, like, 30 camels. They thought they would be great for transport. Just thought the camels would kill it during the war. Yeah, they're ships of the desert. But uh, they uh, they ended up testing out the camels and saying, nah, <laughs> not going to use those. So then they just sold them at auctions. Well, they tested it. <laughs> hey, the, cam the camels were cool, but no thank you. Two guys like went all the way to the Middle East to buy 30 camels to come back and then it wasn't even used. Uh, one of the most famous little fun tidbits is that the king of Siam offered war elephants to Abraham Lincoln <laughs> for travel. Why not? Why not for travel and stuff? And Abraham Lincoln responded. Uh, I had Abraham Lincoln's letter. It's not that exciting, but he opens up with my good and great friend, which is a great opening to a letter. So the strongest opening in the right opening when someone offers you elements to the king of Siam. My good and great friend. He was like, sorry, with the invention of steam engines on land and sea, 
our transportation is covered. <laughs> we have trains and we have ships. So the elephants, no thank you, but thank you. No thank you, but thank you very much. I think you had to you have to say yes to at least two elephants. I mean, w- the mind fuck you bring to Confederate soldiers when Pickett's charging. I mean, I'm thinking Stonewall Jackson wouldn't have stood so stone-like if an elephant's coming at him. Just the mental game in itself. They got fucking elephants? Elephant mental game is a lot stronger. You t- and plus, you take a lot of attention to that. I mean, that's that's a whole thing. I mean, you're the you're the Confederate troop, and you hear an elephant like, Arr! that was bad. That was like a wolf. You hear an elephant make their elephant noise. Can you do an elephant noise? Not really. Not a good one, huh? Yeah. You hear that in the distance. I think that I think this was a big swing and a miss by Lincoln. Y- yeah. yeah. You got to use the elephant. You, you, if you have an opportunity to get Ellie's, you go get them. Yeah. That's. I mean, we'd, we'd have a lot more fun stories if he would have said yes to the elephants in the Civil War. This is uh, the, uh, the Civil War goes down. It was like um, the birth of invention, really. The, the printing press, the steam engine. Pe- inventions were hot because they had this power now. What can we make this power do? Coal and shit like that. So sure. it's credited for a lot of inventions. Um, I'm just going gonna, gonna to go down a list. You tell me if any stop. Ready? Railroad artillery, a successful submarine, a snorkel breathing device, the periscope for trench warfare, land mine fields, field trenches on a grand scale, flamethrowers, military telegraphs, naval torpedoes, anti-aircraft fire, repeating rifles, fixed ammunition, steel ships, revolving guns, military railroads, Organized medical and nursing corps, army ambulance corps, a workable machine gun, the Gatling gl- gun, um, legal voting for servicemen, the income tax, withholding tax, tobacco tax, cigarette tax, American conscription, American bread lines, the Medal of Honor, photography of battle. That's pretty crazy. The bugle call taps. Uh, American president assassinated was the first. U.S. Navy admiral electrically exploded bombs and torpedoes, a lot of stuff. And I have a couple notes on some of these. This, I think, is awesome. I mentioned earlier that the South had its own currency, right? Well, in the first of economic warfare, the North had a massive counterfeit program of Confederate currency. Union printers flooded the south with bogus money its only defect being its superiority to the genuine article printers went so far as to duplicate five cent notes of confederate towns and business enterprises as a spur to inflation think of the the nerd who had that idea how giddy he was oh yeah i was gonna i was i was gonna say that that's about as geeky of dirty warfare as it gets for the time like if General Lee, who will talk about, you know, and all these people are are sitting in the war room. All right. What are our ideas? Well, we're going to we're going to push them into Maryland and we're going to flank them there. We're going to take over the artillery and fight them on their own field. And then it's, we're going to flood their businesses with fake money. <laughs> we're going to inflate the currency. Do you, do you think they got laughed at pretty hard at first or everyone was like, that's brilliant? I think it was, everyone said that's brilliant, but a lot of people were, were like, what the fuck? They had airfare, like balloons, like hot air balloons, bombs, like they would float up and then drop bombs. That was pretty cool. The federal armies were offered a miraculous water walking device, which would make military bridges a thing of the past. Each would wear tiny canoes on his feet and drive himself over the water with a paddle. I I need that one more time. Say that again. Okay. The federal army armies were offered a miraculous water walking device, which would make military bridges a thing of the past. 
Each soldier would wear tiny canoes on his feet and drive himself over the water with a paddle. Okay. It's like a paddle paddle board, but separate. Yeah. Sounds like impossible. That sounds impossible. Give me that technology. I'd never be able to master it. The 1800s blow my mind, man. I'm so not there. The time of invention is cool. Like everyone's just inventing everything. Like physical inventions, not like apps and shit like that. Right. That's, uh, I feel like we're so far away from that that like my mind's blow away, blown away because we just got like bird, bird scooters and we got the lime scooters. And so now in the city, like three months ago, there was nobody riding around on motorized scooters and now they're everywhere. But like that's not an invention. That's like fixing a somewhat prob or creating a need almost. I don't know. Yeah, it's different. It was definitely different. They were killing each other all the time. So <laughs> and the oh yeah, and the killing. <laughs> on the future of this season of the Civil War, things to look forward to. We have Bleeding Kansas and John Brown, hero or psycho, picnicking the first battle. Stonewall Jackson, he's such a character. You're going to love Stonewall Jackson. The Battle of Antietam, uh, snowball fights, fist fights, Thanksgiving, Christmas, surrender, uh, pillaging, bands, music, plays a crazy part of the Civil War. Crazy part. That's interesting. Uh, So, yeah, a lot of fun stuff. At the end of the season, at the end of the season, we're going to do a QA and a where if you guys have any questions to uh, more about what I researched, uh, let me know if Jake has any more questions or if you have any questions for Jake and I in general. Uh, at the end, we were going to do those. But if you come across any questions, leave them in a review or go to laughsfromthepast.com. Well, that's that doesn't have a question set up, but I'll set one up. But um, leave a review. Put the question there. We'll do that at the end. Yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Civil War. Jake's got, you got to get your mind into the Civil War era, Jake. I'm trying, man. I, uh, I've i never been in a Civil War, so maybe I'll I'll try sparking something to, to get more into it. You're like the size of the average soldier, I think. So what's that make you, Jim? I'm, I'm heavier than the average soldier. Okay. You're like the average si- size. I think they're lighter than you. I think it was like five, five... Five seven one fifty was like the average size. All right, so we're both bigger. Yeah, we're both fatter. Yeah, we could just say that next time. You're closer. Ah, uh, by a little bit, man. It depends on the meal, I think these days. Yeah. All right. Well, that is the end of the first episode of season two of Last from the Past: The Civil War. Favorite tidbit you learned today, Jake? Lean and elephants. Um, definitely not the Siamese twins. I'm going to do everything I can to forget that. That's my favorite by far. Drafted one Siamese twin. <laughs> Maybe Honest Dave starting uh, the letter that way. I like that a lot. My good and great friend. My good and great friend. <laughs> Thank you so much <laughs> for offering the elephants. But <laughs> we got bigger needs. Uh the letter is awesome. I wish that maybe I should have, I should have had it out. Uh, but yeah, my 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 <laughs> my great and good. Oh, it's great and good friend. How do you even? That's such a weird term. They're both the same word. One's better than the other. Whatever. All right. Thank you guys. That's last from the past. See ya. Uh-huh.